Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests that give us great information and insight in the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage four cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. That can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. You can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. On today's episode, we're going to dive deep into life and a hope revealed moment through the life of a very special guest. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Hey, it's Zach Friedman. So glad to be here with my great friend, Matt Crump. We're gonna hit it hard on the Hope Revealed podcast. Stay tuned, it's all coming up next. Hey everyone, it's Zach Friedman. So excited to be on the Hope Revealed podcast today. I am a founder and CEO and entrepreneur of a great company called Make Lemonade. Make Lemonade is a personal finance company. We compare the best rates on everything from student loans to credit cards, personal loans, debt consolidation. Our goal is really to help empower consumers so they can make the best financial decisions. I'm also an author. My new book, The Lemonade Life, How to Fuel Success, Create Happiness, and Conquer Anything is out and available everywhere. I'd love for you to grab a copy, hardcover, ebook, and the audiobook, which is narrated by me. Apple named it a must-listen audiobook, so please, when you have a second, read the book. Go listen to the audiobook. Great to be here with my friend Matt and looking forward to diving in. Hey everybody, Matt Crump here with you. Super excited to have my pal Zach with us today. Zach Friedman is the author of a new book that's out and it's called The Lemonade Life right here. This is Zach Friedman right over, whoops, there. <laughs> there, there we go, that guy. It's hard to point that way. Anyway, I'm happy that he's here. And there's so much to be able to talk about in this book. I've been reading it, and there is a bunch of gold up inside of this book. And we're going to talk about that, a little bit about his life and what he's doing in the finance world and how he's able to really bring some change into people's lives. And one of the things we'd love to talk about here on Hope Revealed is, is really how to find hope in situations when, when there may not be ways to find it. And uh, I can guarantee you that we're about to hear a story about how that happened in Zach's life. This happens to all of us. What's really cool is to see the flip side on how that really works when things come through when you think they're not going to. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today in our episode. So thanks so much for being here, Zach, on Hope Revealed today. Matt, so great to be with you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Super excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here too. Even though I forgot that we were supposed to have the time to record today, <laughs> you called me to remind me. So it's even better. It's a great show, right? We learn. Here we go. So I'm doing that today too, right here for you folks. So, and I'm super excited that um, we've had a chance just to connect and, and you and I have done that through the platform of LinkedIn. And uh, it's a place where I really hadn't given much thought to for uh, many years. And then uh, recently, uh, the past several months, six months or more, I've been there and it's just blown my mind, uh, the connections and opportunities that are available to, to many folks there that uh, people just aren't aware of. But if it weren't for that opportunity, I, I wouldn't even know uh, you and you wouldn't know me. And I'm so grateful that we've had the chance to meet. And, uh, and just become friends through that. And uh, yes, yes. Stuff. It's really cool. So you're doing a lot platform. of great things. Tell me a little bit about um, your business because that's really where everything started for you and that you've written other books besides this book. And uh, I'd love to be able to share with some folks what, what that side of you is. What, what made you go into sure. what you're doing? How, why are you doing this? Why finances? Really, when you're a little kid, you grew up and said, I want to be a finance guy. I mean, what happened there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, thanks for having me on Hope Revealed. This is a fantastic show. It's a great platform. And I think you're a great voice for positivity and, and spreading hope in the world. So thanks, God bless and, and really, really appreciate everything that you do. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, so excited to be here, Matt. And yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, tell, tell listeners a little bit more about me. So I am, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Make Lemonade. Um, we're at makelemonade.co. And we're a leading online personal finance platform. And basically what we do is we empower consumers to lead their best financial life. And we do that in several ways. So if you imagine the way the world works uh, in finance today, if you want to get a loan somewhere, 
you know, where do you go? Maybe you go to a bank, you go to a, an online lender, and you just kind of get a rate, and that's the rate that you get, and you don't really know if it's a good one or a bad one. You, maybe it's based on your credit score. And so I really wanted to change that. What I wanted to do was have a comparison site where there was full transparency and consumers were empowered to make the best financial decision. So if you imagine, let's say you want to refinance your student loans. Student loans are a big issue in this country today. Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, you know, over $1.5 trillion of student loans are outstanding today. About 45 million borrowers are impacted. Wow. And so what we do is rather than just going to a bank and refinancing your student loans, we compare um, through all of our partners all of the best rates side by side. So you can see all the fixed rates, the variable rate ranges, the loan terms, um, the states that's eligible, what credit score you might need as a minimum, an income a threshold you might need. And it's all laid out side by side. So you can really see what works best for you. And then you can apply directly through Make Lemonade uh, with our partners. And so we really want to provide transparency and empower consumers so they can make the best decisions. We do the same thing with credit cards. You choose the best credit cards for cashback credit cards or 0% APR, balance transfer, uh, travel rewards, you name it. And you choose the best that are for you based on your financial situation or, or what your desires are. Same with debt consolidation, personal loans, um, consolidating credit card debt. And so we partnered with some great uh, leaders uh, in the space and um, were able to provide a, a great service. We also give away, uh, all our content is free. Everything on Make Lemonade is free. Wow. Um, so we give away tons of tons of content and the content's very simple to understand. It's, it's proactive. It's step by step how to do things. It's not theoretical. We break it down very simply. Uh, we have the best calculators. So we give away uh, free calculators on the site so you can compute very quickly how much money you'll save or what your payments might look like. And so it's really all about providing value, creating impact for people so they can live a better financial life. And so that, that is make lemonade. And I spent a lot of time doing that as an entrepreneur. Um, I also, um, write for Forbes extensively. So I have a, a column that's reached, uh, over 17 million people now. So for, very yeah, you fortunate spoke to some, uh, that. some guy recently, a little older guy out there, not too many people familiar with him. Um, uh, Warren Buffett, right? I think that guy, something like that was our right name. Yeah, I did. I, I, I was fortunate to have lunch with Warren Buffett. Um, that, that is lunch true. And I, Warren Buffett. Lunch with Warren Buffett. That is, that is true. About spilling something on him or what would that feel like when you're sitting down with Warren Buffett at the table? You know, you know, Warren Buffett um, is a, a phenomenal person and, and you know, we all know him from his investing prowess and what he's built with Berkshire Hathaway. And I had the opportunity uh, with a group of folks to head out to, to Omaha and spend time with him uh, at Berkshire Hathaway. And he was very generous with his time spending hours uh, with our group and, and then generously took us to lunch. And um, Warren Buffett was phenomenal. We learned about the economy and investing and all the things you think you'd learn about business. But right. the, the lessons that I took away and actually motivated me uh, partly to write my book, The Lemonade Life, um, was the message that I heard behind the investing and the business acumen. But it was really about happiness mm -hmm. and thinking about success, not just in material or financial terms, but one of the great drivers of success is really your internal happiness and understanding yourself and your self-awareness and the people who are more independent minded, um, who can think freely, who understand how to make decisions for themselves, not for other people, um, can really be on a path towards greatness and success. And that really framed for me, um, how to think about the lemonade life. It was a big epiphany. You talk about hope reveal in the beginning and, and things yeah. that have impacted my life. And that was a very impacting thing for me. Um, impactful thing for me because you know, here was someone who was one of the most successful people ever. And, you know, they didn't build their investment empire in New York City, um, where many folks do. He brought, brought it back to Omaha, where, where he was from. Wow. Um, you know, he's, he's lived in the same house since 1958, um, which he bought for about $30,000. You know, he's, <laughs> uh, he's been driving the same car for a long time. And um, he's, he's just, uh, you know, a, a, a guy who understands who he is. And I think that's been it's not the only reason he's successful, but it's certainly been one of the driving forces. And, you know, I wanted to write a book, The Lemonade Life, that really could inspire people to find that same happiness to help them drive success. You know, I think so many people are focused um, on, on the material wealth, and that's great if that motivates you. Um, but I think before you focus on success as a concept, it really, you really need to take a step back and think about your, yourself and your happiness, um, your well-being, and really focusing there. And so after meeting Warren Buffett, um, and thinking about this and, and, and reading and understanding about positive psychology and, and related topics, I wanted to delve in to understand really a key question, what drives success? You know, it's a question all of us ask um, as we're all on our journeys, professionally, personally. And what I found in, in studying that question and looking at leaders in business and, and politics and sports and entertainment um, and folks who I'd known, there are really five drivers of success. 
uh, that I found that were common across all of these great people. And in the book, I talk about this in The Lemonade Life, kind of what are those five drivers and how do you apply them to your own life? Because we all have the power to change our circumstances and apply those five drivers, which I call switches. Yeah, that's and these, the prism part right there, right? It is prism, yeah. It's, it's an acronym, P-R-I-S-M. And these are the five switches. I read the book, I, y'all. I read the book. <laughs> you did, you did. You got, you got an A plus for that. Thank you. Um, and these are the five behaviors. They're like light switches. Um, and you can flip them on and off. Uh, we all have the power to do it. And these light switches are not just in famous people like Warren Buffett. They're actually inside all of us. And when we have the power and the courage to flip those five switches, we can lead a more purpose-filled life um, with more happiness, more success, and more greatness. Yeah, flip. I like to use that word, flip. I know a little yeah, bit about that absolutely. too. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So, yeah. so a lot of these things obviously were, were inside of you before you met Warren. And some of these things uh, probably came to the surface for you more than they were prior to that meeting. I think this would be a, well, it's horrible to even use its acronym, but it's, it's kind of come to Jesus moment when you're sitting with somebody, you're in the finance world and you're sitting down with, with Mr. Finance himself, Mr. Money, and you get a chance to learn some things from him. That was a big moment for you. And uh, I guess you said the lemonade life really started to, to pour out of you after that meeting with Warren. You didn't start writing the book prior to that meeting, did you? Or was that after? No, I, I, I did not. And, and, yeah. and it, it, was, it was one of the things um, that influenced me um, quite deeply. Because I think, you know, so many folks, uh, you know, in, in life, no matter where they're from, are kind of chasing something, right? They're chasing uh, a dream. They're chasing, you know, they want to go to Hollywood and make it big as, as an actor or an actress. Um, they want to go to Wall Street and hit it uh, big in the finance world. They want to go to Silicon Valley and, and yeah. make it in the, in the tech world. And so, so many people are kind of stuck in this rat race. And because that's the way they understand success or what they think they're supposed to do. Um, and when you meet someone like Warren Buffett, and you know, albeit he's been very, very successful, um, but, I, but I don't think he is someone, I think, he, I think he talks very genuinely and very authentically. And even if he didn't have the, the money and the stature that he's gained and built for himself, I think he would still have these principles. And those principles really spoke to me. They're principles I've, I've believed in, but hearing it from someone like him um, was very refreshing and um, was certainly inspiring and motivating to me. No, absolutely. I totally agree with what you're saying at the core of who we are, right? And it really comes down to, obviously, Warren knows who he is and he's able to do what he does well. Um, but there's no difference between me and Warren Buffett or you and Warren Buffett. There's no difference when we, when we really come into knowing who we're supposed to be. Correct. Some, some That's folks, exactly right. Right. And some folks might think, well, I don't have the money Warren has. It's not about the money. Um, it's definitely about the position of your heart and, uh, and to know where you're supposed to be. And when you have clarity in your call, confidence in what you're supposed to be doing, uh, it's much easier to attain those things. So I would wonder during that time, and I just don't want to make this all about Warren because this is really about you. So I'm wondering, you know, what might have been one of the most uh, most impactful moments at that moment for you personally? Uh, you said some of those things that, that you saw in him came to fruition, whether he had money or not. You saw that there were some of those things that were similar between you and him. Uh, was there something, some kind of takeaway for you personally, not necessarily that you wrote the book or whatever, but was there something in you that you took? Because yeah. a lot of times we go to an event or a workshop or a seminar or something and, and we're super high. Man, it was an awesome show. Love, woo! And you come home, I'm going to take over the world. And then first week you're like, I'm going to exactly over the world. And the next week you're like, I don't know if I can get out of bed. You know, right? So... Uh, what was that thing that you think is still there for you? Still, yeah, I gotta gotta have this. Yeah, and, and that's a really good point. You know, for me, it's it's really all about having a permanent positive mindset. And so you you made a really good point, and I talk about this in the book, The Lemonade Life, as well. You know, folks who will go on YouTube and watch a clip, or they'll listen to Hope Revealed, or they'll watch one of your great content uh, videos on LinkedIn or, or oh, elsewhere, shucks. come on, and they and they get super inspired, right? And they're like, yeah. I want to conquer the world. Um, and then, and then nothing happens, right? Or then they'll watch another clip and they get inspired again, nothing happens. And so for me, it's always been important to have a real positive mindset. And, and, I, and I don't mean a temporary one. I mean, literally the lens, the filter through which you see the world uh, is a positive one. You believe in, in the greatness of people, in humanity. You see situations, even if they are not positive, through a positive lens and a positive filter. And I think if you rewire your brain to think in that way, to act in that way, to communicate in that way, to see the world in that way, to experience people in the world and humanity that way, 
you will have a much easier run at life. It, does, it, does, it doesn't mean you're always happy. It doesn't mean yeah. that you, you, you know, there's no obstacles in life or no roadblocks. Um, everyone has those experiences. Um, but it just allows you to get through life and conquer those challenges a, a lot better, I believe. And so that experience with Warren Buffett was certainly one. I, I think you brought up a good point too. Um, something I, I, I think that resonated with me that, that led to um, inspiration for me was, was, was thinking more about a purpose-filled life. And this idea of purpose, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't get talked about as much. I, we talk about it in in faith, right? And and you would know this being a pastor, obviously. Um, it, having a purpose is really the why in your life. It, it's why you get up every morning, why you do what you do, who are you serving, who are you doing this for, how are you making the world better? And and a purpose can really have a wide definition. You could be serving God, you could be serving your family, um, serving society, uh, you could be doing it for yourself. There are many different ways and reasons um, and, and justifications for purpose, but I think essential to the theme of the lemonade life, the lemonade life is all about leading your life on your terms with purpose and possibility. And purpose, I explained, is the reason you get up every morning. It's the why in your life. It's your, it's your mission. And possibility is the other side of that coin. It's infinite opportunity. And when, when you have infinite opportunity and you see the world as much larger than your immediate sphere and you have the reason why you're doing it, it just connects I believe, for you to conquer more things in your life and reach out to those opportunities. Some may be near, some may be far. And the nexus between that purpose and possibility is action. And if you can take the action to connect your purpose and possibility, you can lead the lemonade life. I'm in, buddy. Sign me up. That sounds like good stuff right there. There All you right, go. So I think some of that really comes down to the P in what you're talking about, which is perspective. And it's really good, things you're saying, um, but let's just get real. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy to do that it's at all. It's not easy. No. It's not easy. And, and how in the world, uh, I guess perspective is the first point in that, um, yeah, like I said, this, this sounds really great. But then for those that are beating their heads against the wall, Zach, and you know what I'm talking about. It's just you try and you try and try. And, you know, how do we do that? Right? It just does, what's the how there to, to the why? What's that? It's a matter of perspective, right? So, I mean, okay, I get that, but what's that look like? Yeah. So, let, let, let's go back to what I was saying before. You know, separate your circumstances from your mindset. I, I, I think that's an important point. People let circumstances overtake their mindset. Mm, that's great. So, everyone has, has challenges, right? Some yeah. small, some large. Some people sweat the small stuff. People have everything from financial issues, relationship issues, health issues, you name it, work issues, professional uh, challenges. Uh, everyone has some kind of issue that they're trying to confront in their lives. Not to minimize that, but if we can move it to the side for a second and just focus on the mindset itself. I think when people see the world in a more positive light, despite challenges and despite roadblocks, right? Because what happens is people allow excuses, what I call in the book, the lemonade life, the chasm of can't. You know, this mm -hmm. is all the times that people have made excuses and we all do it, right? We're, we're all guilty of this, you know? Yeah. I, don't, I don't have enough money. I'm too old. There's too much competition. I'll never get hired there. I, I won't get into this school. I mean, you, you can just list the, name, the, the things of no's that we all tell ourselves. Yeah. And, th and then on top of that, you can pile on all the no's you hear from your family and friends. You can't, do, you can't start a business. What, what are you kidding me? Come on, think of all the competition, right? <laughs> yes. Matt, you can't, you can't write a book. There's, you know, there's millions of books out there. Matt, you can't have a podcast. Right. You know how many podcasts there are? You know? And you know, you, look, you have two choices. You can listen to what people tell you. And sometimes they're right. It's not to say that you, know, you can't take advice from other people. But when you keep hearing no's, it operates in this sphere, which I, an environment I call the chasm of can't. And if you let people kind of tell you what your destiny is going to be, then that's going to be your destiny, man. Like if you're going to focus on, on being dependent on other people for your own thoughts, mm. it's really hard to kind of change your circumstances. Do you feel me? Yeah, brother. I'm there. I'm in the zone. Yeah. That so. Is so, good. so yeah, and, and, and so you know, it really begins inside your own mind. You have to separate your circumstances first. Don't, don't let it be clouded. And when you understand who you are and what your life can become, okay, it may not be that way today. Like, I, I get it. It may not be that way today. You may have a million problems, if you're listening right now, that are just weighing down on your shoulders. And I get that. I get that. It does not feel great. Yeah. Um, but when you're at the bottom, if, if that's where you are, if you're listening right now, you know, there's only one place to go, and that's up. 
right? I, I would tell you to, to lift your head. Lift your head and look up because there's a lot more up than down. <laughs> and it, 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 it's important to remember that. Yes. And so it really begins inside your mind and you have to make a fundamental choice if you're going to be listening to all the no's in your life or you're going to start listening to the yeses. And when you start incorporating things, and I talk about this in the Lemonade Life, when you start incorporating things like purpose in your life, if you take a, take a piece of paper, nobody does this. Very few people do this. They literally take a piece of paper and write down in one sentence, my purpose in life is, and fill in that blank. Yeah, It's not going to come to you immediately. And, and a lot of people, it takes a lot of time to actually think about that and put it in one sentence. Yes. And when you do that exercise, that very, very, it sounds very simple, but when you do that, you're going to understand a lot more about yourself. You're going to understand about where you fit in the world, what you're trying to work on, who you're, who you're doing it for. And, and having that life purpose is just going to ground you. I, I find it just, it's a very grounding and moving experience. And if you start with that and you incorporate other things like gratitude, which we can delve into as well, I think is a huge thing to give people um, a positive lift in their life. Yeah. It, certainly, it certainly helps me every day. I practice it every day and I, I'm happy to share how. Um, I think those are the types of things you begin with before you even get to your circumstances. Because if you have purpose in your life, if you have gratitude in your life, and by gratitude, I mean counting your blessings, understanding what you're thankful for, what you have in your life rather than what you don't. And if you start from that position, even if you have small things in your life, even if you have nothing in your life you feel, it gives you a position of strength rather than weakness because you're starting with what you have as a basis, as a foundation. And then you use all of that power that you've given yourself back to conquer your circumstances as best as possible. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. This is this is not this is not a you know leading the lemonade life is not like you flip on a switch and you're good to go. Right. Like right. This, this is something you're this is something you're living for your entire life. It, it's it's it is a lifestyle. It's a mindset, and you're not working towards uh, you know a, a finite destination. This is an infinite game that you're playing to lead the life that you want on your terms with purpose and possibility. Yeah. Gosh. I mean. This is so freaking awesome, Zach. We're having a blast here. And this kind of leads into, I'd like to get into gratitude, but we only have so much time. Sure. Uh, but but um, risk and independence, kind of where you're at here, I think it's a good place to segue from there, is when you have some of those things down, because I think gratitude is a big key word, and I think it's played out for some people. I think that there is ignorance about the word, and people just say, oh, yeah, I get gratitude. I'm thankful for it. They don't understand the depth of it, which you just gave some, some ideas of what that is. Not necessarily just getting on your knees in the morning and say, thank you for today, and thank you that it's pretty outside, and thank you that I'm alive, which are good things to be grateful for. But, you know, it's, it's, it's actually being intentional about some things, right? And, and the first thing you said was perspective. So we have a perspective about our lives like you've just talked about here for the past few minutes. Um, one area that I love and value in my life is risk. I'm not afraid to risk. I would say not always. I think there are times I'm definitely afraid to risk. Um, but uh, risk is a, is a powerful value. And the only way we're going to move forward in life, uh, which is independence, the next part, is by being willing to, to risk some things, to risk mm -hmm. being wrong to risk screwing up, right? Uh, to be able to get to a place of independence. So uh, if you can spend a couple of minutes there on risk and independence from where we're at from that perspective, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so risk is all about getting outside your comfort zone. That, that, that's certainly one aspect of it. You know, how can we kind of move from where we are today to where we want to be? Um, sometimes that involves some risk and, and that's obviously uncomfortable for a lot of people who don't like to take risk. Mm. And, you know, the people who are most successful tend to think unconventionally. Um, sometimes they, they think conventionally, absolutely, and they follow a path and it just happens to work out and they've you know, just kind of always done the same thing and it just worked out for 20 years. They've always been in the same job and that, that's fine for certain people. Yeah. You know, many people take different paths and they're not able to do that so easily. And so a lot of people get out, out number one, get us out of their comfort zone and kind of look, look at the world differently. They're proactive, but they're unconventional. And that's what I call a daring disruptor in the book. Um, and there are a lot of you know, entrepreneurs and inventors um, business folks who have kind of gone against the grain. You, you, you name the person, um, whether it's Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos at Amazon, um, or Ray Kroc at McDonald's is in the book, Sam Walton at Walmart. There's so many different entrepreneurs and business leaders and icons who have you know, done something different and unconventional. Um, another important point in the book is how people think about risk. You know, I think your decision making is so important for the life that you lead. And we make so many decisions every day from what color shirt we wear, um, to the jobs we take, to the, to the relationships in our lives. And I think really honing in on your decision-making and your choices has a huge impact 
um, on, on the life that you live. And so I talk about how to make better decisions in the book. A lot of people think about risk in a binary way. They're either risk seeking, right? They like to gamble. They like to take huge chances and big bets. Um, or they're risk averse. They don't really like to get into risk and they just kind of that steady path. And in the book, I talk about ways to kind of flip that on its head and think about risk in a relationship between risk and reward. And what do I mean by that? So rather than thinking about this binary thing, you're either like risk or you don't, every decision you make really should be broken down in what's your upside and what's your downside and what's the ratio and relationship between the two. Mm, yeah. And if you understand that, um, you can make choices a lot better, financial ones, career ones, you name it. And, and that's a better way to think about it. I don't want to give away too much from the book, but sure. um, the more that you can do that, the better. No, that's, that's, so that's good. the risk. Yeah, because a lot of times we can take a, an uneducated risk, <laughs> and just because we're risk takers, you, you jump. When if you'd had the proper information and perspective, you would have said, I ain't jumping from that at all. <laughs> that's not, that's right. That's, that's right. Wrong, that's the wrong risk to take. That's uh, right. That's I was right. Offered at one point in my cancer treatments here, they took me off of all the treatments that I was on because it wasn't helping anymore. Mm -hmm. Not operable, couldn't do this. So they said, there's one other drug we can try. Um, but if we do this drug, there is an 80% uh, chance you'll die. And there is a 60 to 80% chance that you're going to have permanent damage to multiple organs in your body. However, um, there is a chance that we will stop the cancer too. Um, so my wife and I took a trip to Scotland and Ireland. They told me, you know, take some time. You got a couple of weeks and we can figure this out. And while we were on that trip, I made the decision that, um, that when I came home, I was going to do the treatment. I was ready to do it. And, uh, I fought hard for that decision because there's a lot involved and my kids are young. And, and, um, that's the biggest reason why I've been fighting was for my children. I wanted them to have a father the Absolutely. best that I could do. So I made the decision when I came back as much hell as I was given my oncologist prior to that about treatments and whatnot. I made the decision to go ahead and do it. And uh, when we got back from the trip, I told her, okay, I've made the decision. I'm ready to do this. She says, well, I'm not. I've changed my mind. I said, what? <laughs> she said, yeah, I don't think that the reward outweighs the risk at this point. She said, I think that I'd rather, rather try to see how we can handle some of your symptoms and side effects rather than giving you this, because I think that the, the reward is not what we want uh, in this flight treatment. So here I was ready to jump, right? I made yeah. the decision, and then she said, no, it's the, the reward's not worth the risk. And that is such a powerful statement that you just made there. It what is, and it's a powerful story you shared, yeah. Well, thank you. It's just it, uh, important to know what that risk and reward really is, and have you weighed those options, or are you just going to yes. jump? Right. Yes. Yes. That's, that's an excellent point and, and, and a very moving story, Matt. Um, I know you, you and I have talked about this offline as well. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the power for you to decide your life and really um, influence the decisions and choices that you make when you use that framework of risk and reward where you're educated about the decision, you really understand all the pluses and minuses and the relationship between the two. You're going to make much better decisions than just, yeah, let's do it or no, let's not do it. Um, and, and being thoughtful about it, as you said, and as your, as your doctor said, too. So um, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that, that, uh, that framework um, that was used by your doctor, too. Yeah, me, too. We probably wouldn't be talking. So. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we are. I'm glad I am, we too. Are. I am, too. All right, last two here, the S and the M, self-awareness, right, which we kind of just tar started talking about. We're yeah. Talking about that now. Yeah. And then uh, it was motion, right? I think it was. Motion. That's right. That's okay. right. Yeah. So this is this is P R I S M for for folks who are yeah yeah listening. prism. So that's the, the yeah prism. P, P is for perspective. R is for risk. I'll throw in independence real quick. Independence is really um, ha having we talked about it before, but having having a a non dependent mindset, right? So the actions you take, the way that you think, your perspectives are built by you and for you. They're not built by other people, um, because when you rely on other people, they control your destiny. You don't. Mm. And that's everything from, you know, I talk about it in the book, you know, in the lemonade life, being in a work meeting. We've all been in those meetings before where the boss says, so this is the decision we're going to take. Uh, is everybody in agreement? And we go around the table and everyone just kind of nods. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. We don't want to, we don't want our bonus affected. We don't want our, <laughs> our, prom our promotion negatively uh, impacted. 
Yeah. And people go along with the majority all the time um, or most of the time. And so um, it doesn't, doesn't mean the majority is wrong, but if you have an opinion um, and it's a, you know, in a reasonable way to communicate it, then you should raise your hand. You should speak up. Um, and it's okay to challenge the status quo sometimes, obviously in a respectful way. Um, but, but the more people that do that and really sanity check, um, I think we get to better outcomes and decisions. That's just one example of being more yeah, independent. Iron sharpens mind. iron, right? If you, if you are doing it with the proper perspective, obviously not being rude and self, self-seeking, sure. uh, but it's to, for the better good, iron sharpens iron. They might say, huh, I never thought about that before. Is that a great idea? They might, might say that or they might say I completely disagree. <laughs> but, say you're but, fired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, 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 but the point is, like, if, if you have an independent mindset, you're not relying on what your boss says or what society's telling you or the, the, keeping up with the Joneses, right, what your neighbors have and the lifestyle they're living and you're trying to keep up with it and, you know, live in that rat race. Yeah. It's very hard for you to kind of live the life that you want to live because you're going to be living someone else's existence. Mm. And so I show you in the book how to be a lot more action oriented for yourself um, and to break that chain. Um, of what I call the herd mentality. Yeah. So that's I. Um, self-awareness, we talked about it a little bit. It, it, it's, it's really understanding yourself. We talk about self-awareness a lot. We, people have heard that term. Um, but it's really taking some time to really understand who you are as a person. Who is Matt, right? What's important to Matt um, professionally in, in your life at one high level, but at a, at a more concrete uh, level, you know, what are your values, right? What, what, what's your purpose in life? Why are you here? What, why, are you, why are we all doing what we're doing? Um, what are we good at? What are we actually not good at? Um, a lot of people don't, don't like to address themselves what they're not good at, right? I mean, sit down, sit down and write down 10 things you're not good at. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it's not to like demotivate you, but it's, it's literally to say you shouldn't be spending your time here. Yeah. Like if you're, not, if you're not good at something, I'm not talking about a behavior um, that you, you need to improve or correct. I'm talking just like a weakness. Like you're not, you know, you're not going to be a chef, for example. If you're not a great cook, you're not going to be a chef. You know, it's probably not for you to open a restaurant, right? <laughs> doesn't mean you need to take classes and somehow become this master chef if that's not in the cards or, or you think that's not the best use of your time. But the world becomes a lot more efficient when you understand what you're good at and what you're not. You can improve things, absolutely. You can learn new things. You can expand your horizons. Um, but try to be efficient with your time. It goes for being an entrepreneur, starting a, a new business, um, finding your calling in life. If, if God and, and being a pastor is your calling in life, I mean, it's important to identify that as soon as possible. And so, I, you know, I show you ways to do that in, in the book, um, how to set goals, how to really understand yourself. And then I would just add one more thing about S. Um, S is for self-awareness. It's also important to take time for self-care. Um, it's, a, it's a topic that actually doesn't get talked about a lot. Um, you know, people, people get stressed out, uh, from their lives, uh, stressed out from their careers. And a lot of times we, we go through life in this, in this rat race and we're always trying to do and do and do and take care of other people. It's, it, it's human nature. We want to take care of our families, our friends, our loved ones. And I would really implore everyone to take time for yourself, right? Take some time to reflect, to meditate, um, do a, do a self checkup to make sure you're okay. Your health, um, your spirit, your, your mental, um, well-being. I think all of those things are super important. You know, we have a lot of PTSD today in the world, um, a lot of folks who are impacted in, in, in related ways. And I think it's important to, to help those folks and give them a chance to reflect and really um, focus on their needs for a second and, and, and spend some time on self-care. So that, that's another important element of, of S's for self-awareness. And the last piece is really about motion. You know, we can talk about all these things, perspective, risk, independent, self-awareness. Um, but if you don't do the hard work to get what you want in life, you'll never get there. Right. Um, and so there are no shortcuts to greatness. And I, I really, you know, a lot of people say, say there are, but I, I, really, I really don't believe that. I really believe the people who are successful, there are a couple stories of luck here and there. But the people who really make the difference, um, they, they flip on all these switches, but they have to do the hard work. And it doesn't matter what your path is. You know, we all have different paths. Some people have a straight path and, you know, it's one and done and they're good to go. Some people, you know, go in concentric circles in a maze, get lost, um, get off the track, come back on the track, get lost again. Um, it, you know, you know who you are if, if this is resonating with you. And it doesn't really matter when you finish the race. It really doesn't. Like we all get there in the end and you have to get there on your terms. So Lemonade Life is about leading, it's leading your best life. It's not leading Matt's best life or Zach's best life. It's leading your best life. It's becoming the greatest you. Yeah. And when you figure that out, it is, it is, it is such an inspiring, uplifting, um, it lifts weights off your shoulders because you're not trying to be Matt Crump. You know, we'd all love to be Matt Crump, but maybe, maybe, maybe we're just not going to be Matt Crump. And that's okay. That is okay because you can be the best person that, that you are meant to be. And you can be incredibly successful in your own sphere. And when we focus on what we can do based on our abilities, 
we really can conquer anything in our life. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's another important element of the Lemonade Life, my new book. Uh, so good, Zach. I mean, this is life-changing information you're sharing with us today. And, and I know specifically, this is really going to be listened to a lot of folks on LinkedIn. We've got other places they'll, li- they'll listen, but uh, specifically in that platform, there's a lot of folks that are hashtag job seekers. And sure. uh, they are folks that are desperate, um, lonely, broken, um, have tried and feel like they can't get anywhere. Uh, and, and you address a lot of this stuff in the book. <clears throat> and I don't believe that you address all this stuff in the book because you read it and you just copied it, wrote it down. I mean, this had to come from your life. That's why you wrote it. And the whole reason the show is Hope Revealed. So, you know, was there this place for Zach that was this moment? Maybe you had a place where you're like, I don't know if I can do this or, or a place where I'm not sure this is going to work or, or whatever. There was that dark place, that moment of unsurety. And then there was something, a person, a place, an event, or some sort of thing that was that hope revealed in your life to help you to say, all right, I can, I can do this. And then as a result of doing that, we're talking about it today, right? So we got it right here. So what, what might that place be for you that John or Sally that's listening to right now can say, gosh, I get all this stuff, but how, right? Was, what's that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful what you just said. It sounds like a Hollywood screenplay. Um, <laughs> hope, hope revealed the movie. Um, <laughs> one day, you know, one day. Yeah, you, you know, I, it, was, it, it, was, it, was not, it was not one event. I, I think that, um, you know, life is a collection of experiences and the people that you meet in your life. Um, it's everyone from your loved ones to your uh, significant others to, you know, children, parents, um, the people you meet in your life that really inspire you and influence you. And I think I've been fortunate to meet a lot of great people in my life um, and, and kind of see the way that, that people experience the world, um, certainly the way I experience the world, but the way that others. Um, and, you know, seeing the things that people struggle with, um, that people have you know, talked to me over the years and kind of asked for my advice on or that I've, I've witnessed in my career um, and the people that I've met and, and been inspired by. And so the Lemonade Life really grew out of those experiences. It wasn't, it wasn't one moment. Um, or, or just around about me. I mean, this book is really about about you. It's about other people and 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 the lives that they lead, um, and how we can kind of bring it all together. You know, the people who are making excuses in their life. Um, what are those roadblocks? How do we solve that? Um, you brought up job seekers, and you're right. If you're a job seeker, it could be very lonely. It could be defeating. You're hearing no a lot. You're hearing you're hearing no response a lot, and you begin to question a lot. My, my best advice for job seekers who are listening to this right now, and I know there are a lot of them on LinkedIn, um, and I know, Matt, you and I spent a lot of time trying to help them um, and inspire them and lift them up and connect them with, with the people they need to be connected with. Um, the first thing I would do after listening to Hope Revealed on this episode today um, is actually to, to put your pencils down, and I would actually stop your recruiting process for a day. And I would, I would literally just take a day for yourself because a lot of people just get in this like rat race in this zone of just hitting apply, 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 apply. I got to apply here. I got to send a resume here. And it, it can be very disorienting. And what I would recommend is put your pencils down and I literally just want you to take a day off. Hmm. Just take a day off for yourself. You know, do, do what brings you joy and happiness in the world. Um, take a day off. Just relax. Um, remember who you are. Remember your greatness. Maybe you need two or three days. Um, but just remember who you are because you're not defined by a resume. You're not defined by a recruiter. You're not defined by uh, an HR office um, or a company. You're, you're you and you are your beautiful, imperfect self. And take, some, take, take a day, take two, three days off and just remember your greatness. I think that's very important. And after that period, I would really sit down and, and try to focus your efforts um, if, you know, if you're hitting a brick wall and you're just literally applying to the same types of jobs and you're not getting a response, you know, I think it's time perhaps to really be honest. And that comes back to self, self-awareness. You know, maybe this particular career is not meant for you. It doesn't mean you're not great or not amazing or you're not a wonderful person. It's just this particular job may not be the right sector for you. And, and that may be hard to hear, but that's the truth. I mean, don't spend a year trying to apply to the same finance job if, if, if it's not working out, mm-hmm. it, you know, there ha- it, it's a symbiotic relationship. Like you have to be great at it, but there also has to be a company that wants your greatness. And if they don't want your greatness, that's okay. It's okay. Not everything has to match in the world. So you may need to pivot, right? You may need to pivot to another sector of finance, or maybe you're meant to work in retail or you're meant to work in construction or you're meant to work in programming. Um, 
you know, you can pivot at any time, right? You don't need to just focus on what you've done for five, 10, 20 years. Um, the world is a beautiful place and there are lots of opportunities. Maybe you want to be an entrepreneur. Maybe this is your time and this is your calling. Maybe it's not. Um, you really need to set, spend time analyzing and understanding who you are as a person and take the time to do that up front. And I think once you do that, you're going you're gonna to have a better peace of mind. Um, and don't, define, you, don't let your greatness be defined by others. Let it be defined by you. Let me interject one thing real quick because I know we need to cut this down here. But um, the key word you just said, your greatness. I, I feel that a lot of times people struggle with that word. Um, they don't know what their greatness is. Um, sometimes people have been beat down so much that they don't even believe that they have a greatness. Right. So without having another half an hour show here, sure. um, what, what could you do to, to stretch that word a little bit for us here today on understanding your greatness or finding that thing or, or not being afraid to, not being self-seeking, not being fat-headed, right? Not being, oh, I'm the greatest man in the world, right? But how, how do you do that? Look, I, I, the first thing that's so important to do, and I'll, I'll do this quickly, no matter who you are, where you come from, what you do for a living, how much money you have, everyone has a shot at greatness. Everyone. Everyone has greatness. Our greatness may be different. Uh, mine may be different than yours. Um, this, this is not uh, you know, a, a self-inflating exercise. This is really about understanding who you are. So the way you find your greatness is, again, sit down and practice self-awareness. Sit down with a piece of paper and literally write down the 10 things that you're great at. If you don't have 10, maybe it's five things that you're great at. And also write down your weaknesses, right? Like write down the things that you're not great at. We all things we're not great at, and that's okay. Um, and then what I want you to do is kind of put the weaknesses to the side. We can, we can focus on that another day when we're focusing on greatness. But, but hone in on those five or 10 things that you're good at. It can be anything, it can be sports, hobbies, writing, um, speaking, um, impacting people's lives, uh, lifting people up, helping people. Um, financial skills, you're, you, lo you love to you know, decorate, you know, buy real estate, wh whatever it is that you do, um, focus on those things and then see if you can draw lines um, from a particular skill you have and see all the areas it can apply. So if you're great at creating impact in people, you, you know when you're with people, you're a great people person. Maybe you can work in sales. Maybe you're a great teacher. Um, maybe you're going to be a pastor like you, Matt. Um, maybe you're going to be a police officer and serve or a firefighter. You're going to join the military. There's so many different ways to create impact and give back to people. Mm. Um, that's the way I think one exercise you can start to find your calling in life. And again, I would connect it to what I said in the beginning about purpose, right? Find your, what is your purpose in life? What do you want it to be? Yeah. When you connect that with some of the things that you're great at or that you have skills in, I think you'll start to develop what your greatness is. There's more tips in the book, but that's, that's one initial step I think you can take. No, that's a great place uh, for people to be able to understand here from this point and uh, really greatness. And you, you, you align that with call and purpose. And some of the ways I tell folks is like, you know, when you go to bed at night and you lay your head down on the pillow, what is that thing that you keep? thinking about that one thing that keeps resonating with you or the one thing that's frustrating you because you just can't get to it yet that one thing and chances are that's the calling uh, yeah. sometimes we run from it and sometimes we run to it so uh, your example of greatness uh, through calling and purpose I think is a fantastic lens uh, for people you. for people to see thank you for that thanks for for providing that again folks in this book called lemonade life I got one too look at that guy he's got one too Mine doesn't have your, it's not signed though. Kind of a bummer. I didn't get I'll one to sign it for you. I will sign it for you, Matt. It's a virtual signing. Yeah. yeah. It's available but, everywhere. You can pick it up anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere, right? Anywhere. Lemonade online. life. Yeah. It's absolutely. lemonade life. It's all over the place. And um, besides that, you have a couple other things which are pretty fun. Um, there, you've started this thing called lemonade lifers, right? Which are people That's that right. kind of get involved with your, your brand and your book and uh, I know that there's some ways, uh, if I'm overstepping, I'll, I'll edit this part out, but um, you have a, a Facebook page for folks to join that want to become Lemonade Lifers, right? Yeah, there's a Facebook group you can join. Um, you can reach me at ZachFriedman.com, Z-A-C-K-F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N.com. Uh, you can watch my TED Talk online, The Secrets to Happiness at Work, uh, which is a great one for uplifting uh, inspiration, how to get happier at our jobs. Yeah. Uh, and you can check out the book. It's available everywhere, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Target, Walmart, all your favorite retailers, your favorite independent bookstores. Uh, you can also go to Lemonade the dollar Life. store, folks. It ain't to the dollar yeah. store yet, but yeah, LemonadeLifeBook.com also um, has all the details on the book. And um, 
yeah, very grateful uh, that you had me on. This is such an inspiring show, Matt. And I, I want to thank you because you are such an inspiration to, to, to me and to so many other people, what you do. Um, you're, you have a great heart and, and I think hope revealed is one of the, one of the many things you do. You've also written a great book, God's got this, uh, which I recommend to folks. And, you know, it's good to have people like you in the world who are kind of sharing goodness and positivity and light Mm -hmm. and, and helping people to to lead their best life. So I want to thank you brother for having me on the show. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here and it's an honor to, to know you and, uh, and call you a friend. So God bless. Thanks so much for that, Zach. I appreciate it too. You're my Warren Buffett. (laughs) I get to sit down with, with Zach Friedman. I really, uh, I really think that you're incredible. And I love, uh, one of the things that I love to tell folks is that they are the hero of the story. And, uh, and you are really telling the story of the hero. And they get to find out what that hero looks like when they get the book. And there's so many great practical things in there. There's a lot of books that I've read, read out there. And some are like, whew, I just like, oh, my Lord. And there's some other ones that are like, wow. And uh, you definitely have the wow factor in this book. I really appreciate you've written it. And there's so much. Just in this short podcast, you have thrown out so many nuggets that have been phenomenal. So people have to listen to this thing over and over again. Yes, uh, they should. So much there. Yeah, so much for that, Zach. And uh, you're available, I'm, I'm sure, uh, because you're an incredible speaker. So you're available for, for speaking, too. You're going out and... Uh, and- yeah, I, I, I speak a lot. Um, and yes, absolutely. I'll be giving... Uh, uh, a number number of speeches uh, yeah. all over. Yeah, absolutely. So if, folks, if you'd like, again, if you'd like to get a hold of Zach, you can do yeah. that at Zach, ZachFriedman.com and uh, find out how to get a hold of him there. If you're an organization or someplace that's looking for a keynote, uh, you can tell right now he's your man. So I'd love for you to be able to reach out to him. And again, for those that are just listening today, whether it's on, uh, on social media here at LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, or uh, YouTube, wherever you're finding it, I appreciate you being here and definitely understanding that there is so much to who you are and there's ways to make lemonade out of lemons. And Zach has made that possible through this book. And I really appreciate that you've made that gateway for folks to be able to find out who they are. And there's Thank so you. many great nuggets that you can always refer back to because it's always good to review. And there's, you've laid it out in such a way that they can. I really appreciate the way you've done that book. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Zach, for being here. I'm so glad to be able to call you my friend. I'm yes, excited absolutely. about you. Uh, you. Just period. I think you're an awesome guy. Love your heart. Love you. And thank you. Right back at you. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here today with us on Hope Revealed. Thanks for having me, Matt. Love it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was good. That was good, man. It was, it was, a, it was a deep dive. It was a deep I dive, know. man. We, we, we really hit like a lot of topics and I think, I think it'll help a lot of people, man. Oh, I do too. It's, a lot of without a doubt. You, you did yeah. so much good stuff there. Thank you. Thank you. This was yeah. great.